Hold and stay your bit. I'm looking for Israel Putnam. On whose orders? Samuel Adams. Follow me. This is not Bunker Hill. Aye, it's Briggs. There's been some disagreement as to where we should encamp. Any news from Boston? The Tories aren't moving, and any time we try to press them, we lose a dozen men. I think Putnam and the others plan to assemble artillery on these hills. A good shelling might make the Red Coast rethink their strategy. And what of John Pitcairn? That bastard's the cagiest of the bunch. He's appeared time to time to taunt us or send regards by way of cannon fire. It's all right, though. He'll have what's coming to him soon enough. Putnam's just up ahead. You can't win. I don't care much for your excuses, gentlemen. We should be building on Bunker Hill. Breed is closer to the city, but it is also closer to their artillery! Our orders came from men so divorced from the situation, we are compelled by reason to employ our own faculties. General Putnam! What? I am looking for you. I was told you would be able to help me find him. He's tucked away inside that city with no reason to be. As long as that ship continues its assault, we'll never flush him out. But if the ship was silenced... Oh, then the Lord God might be forced to get off his arse and come forward. I shall fly the flag to signal my success. And I shall speak fondly of you at your funeral.
enemy advances, and you tremble. They better numbers, he say. Better weapons, better training. But I do not fear, and neither should you. For what they have in material, they lack in conviction and care. But not us. We have discipline. We have order. And most importantly, we have passion! We believe! So maintain vigilance. Conserve your ammo. Ensure a proper line of sight. And above all else, men! Do not fire until you see the whites of their eyes! I'll be damned. You did it. That was quite a speech. Lies, all of it, I'm afraid. Still, such words have carried us thus far. And what of Pitcairn? He's left Boston. As I said, he would. And set up camp on Molten Hill. There's no good way to get at him. Not with that maelstrom growing down below. I suppose you could circle around a bit and wait for us to thin their ranks. There is no time. I will have the chance to direct approach. That's twice today you proposed the impossible. I see no other choice. Not because you're mad as a March Hare, son. I expect an apology on my return.
did you do this? To protect Adams and Hancock and those they serve. You meant to kill them. Kill them? Are you mad? I wanted only to parley. There was so much to discuss. To explain. If you put into that now. If you speak true, then I will carry your last words to them. They must lay down their arms. They must stop this war. Why them and not the Redcoats? Do not think we ask the same question of the British. These things take time. And it would have succeeded had you let me play my part. Part of the puppeteer. For better we hold the strings than another. No, the strings should be severed. All should be free. And we should live forever on castles in the sky. You wield your blade like a man, but your mouth like a child. And more will die now because of that. Sa ha yu yanere ne o tēnā mta seta koe, ti ni o ne yaho tēnā tamta seta koe. Up on me like that. Watch this girl out there and just help this cap retreat. Don't ever do that again, you hear me? God damn it. General Putnam. You live. The same cannot be said for Pitcairn. Well done, I suppose. <laughs> but it matters little now. I'm ordering a full retreat. We have lost too many in exchange for too little. If the Tories want this hill so badly, let them have it. Boston is the true prize. We have a bigger problem. What do you mean? This can't be right. It says they plan to murder Washington. My enemy is tenacious. When money failed them, they took to force. But I have slain Johnson and Pitcairn both, ending their plots. George Washington now rallies the colonists, and their march towards freedom begins in earnest. Little wonder, then, that the Templars now want him dead. They seek to reshape this land into something cold and ordered, something soulless. And he is an obstacle. I must save him, that his cause can flourish and my people remain safe. But the more I prod, the greater the chance I am discovered. The Templars believe their men lost the revolution. In their eyes, the assassins are gone and scattered, no longer a threat. But I fear they will soon discover the truth, and me along with it. I must betray the airport. How fares the hunt, Connor? There is progress, but I worry it is not enough. You must strike where you need it most. What if you pursue Charles Lee and your father? What then of Paul Revere and the soldiers at Lexington? Soldiers? There were no soldiers in those towns, only men and women who were forced to defend themselves. Is this not why you fight? To protect your people? Your struggle is the colonist's struggle. In helping one, you help the other. Encouraging words from one who thought mine a fool's errand. <laughs> Make no mistake. I still do. But I can't help but feel some pride in your success. And why should I give you any credit? Then don't. But uh, first, return the robe and the blade and the, and the darts and all of the years of training and knowledge I have bestowed upon you. 
Return these, and then your words may have some merit. Or you could just admit that you are wrong. Oh, child, please, you've killed two men. One more salesman than soldier. You're gonna have to try a lot harder than that to impress me. Is that so, old man? Or perhaps we should step outside. I will gladly demonstrate how easily I could... Trounce. Connor, this is Benjamin Talmadge. His father was one of us, no need for secrecy. I think he has something he wants to say. Achilles tells me you've uncovered a plot to murder the Commander-in-Chief. Yes, but I have only false starts and dead ends to show for it. Not anymore, my friend. Thomas Hickey's your man, and I aim to help you catch him. How? I'll explain on the way. You and I are going to New York. <laughs>